rise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good evening. When we look at the world today, it seems like there's just no... It's all chaos anymore. There's no respect for things that are good, things of God. And we see all kinds of things out of control. But as a Christian, we don't need to be in part in that mess. But at any times, people are like, well, what is right and what is wrong? Well, that's why we have the Bible, the instruction book. The book that shows us what we should be doing and how we should be living our life. There's so many things in the Bible that shows us how we should be living our life. And when you look at Psalm 1, it tells us there in very simplistic words, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. When we look around this world today, we have so many people who are ungodly. And the Lord says that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We find in the New Testament especially this dual classification of all man's appearance many times, as in the sheep and the goats, the wise and the foolish, virgins, the wise and the foolish virgins, the builders upon the rock and the builders upon the sand, the faithful servant. And the wicked servant, these upon the right hand and these upon the left hand. The wheat and the tares, the wheat and the chaff. Doers of good and doers of evil. The fruitful tree and the unfruitful tree. These are all found in the Bibles as examples and showing us what we should be doing. And also we notice that the happy man is described negatively as one who does not do certain things. You see, so many times people talk about things we should be doing, but we also need to understand there are things we should not be doing. We need to understand that God shows us positive positive declarations, and he also shows us the negative things to stay away from. Another interesting revelation or warning here is a characteristic of wickedness that's able to exercise an increasingly strong power over any person indulging in the least of it. We do not want to be indulging in anything that is wickedness in God's eyes, or known as ungodliness. Walking in the counsel of the wicked is soon followed by standing in the way of the sinner, and that leads us to sitting in the seat of the scornful. Again, we see here that the delight is in the law of the Lord our God is given to us by Jesus. Why we need to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. And we need to shun profane and vain babbling, for it will increase unto more ungodliness. We understand that by studying the word of God helps keep us from the ungodly. As we can see the ungodly acts that are going on around us. And we need to refrain from profane and vain babbling because it keeps us from walking and sitting with the ungodly as well. The ungodly are not so, but like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. We find in this in the gospel account, according to St. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. John the Baptist declared that Jesus will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into his gander, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Not only will the wicked be unable to stand in the judgment of the last day, 
but they will also be able, unable to maintain themselves as stable members of the believing children of God through Jesus. Jesus came here to show us the way. He gives us the instructions. We need to follow them. This helps explain why so many fall away from their faith and they drop out of established congregations of the faithful ones because they do not study. They do not stay away from the ungodly. It says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. <clears throat> it, is, <clears throat> it is not stated here that wicked man shall not prosper. So many people really need to understand Jesus is talking to us about a spiritual life, the next life. On this earth, we see wicked people prospering all the time. But what are they doing? They're laying their treasures here on this earth where the moths will eat them and they will rust and they will be destroyed. The sad truth that many times people don't understand that being evil is not going to pay you well because in the end, there will be a time when the Lord will come back and with a righteous anger and he shall cast out all the evil out of his universe into utter darkness and that wickedness will be in destruction and in hell's fire forever and ever. We find this in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. He says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the sum of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses, law died, without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under foot the Son of God and accounted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompose that the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We need to learn to avoid ungodliness at all costs. We need to study to make sure that we understand what is godliness and what is not godliness. What is right in the sight of God and what is not right in the sight of God. That's why Jesus came to this earth to give us the written books, the written instruction. Today we are surrounded by so much ungodliness we need to understand that we can be wise, <clears throat> but we need to understand that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You see, that is wise to understand those words. Those words have a deep meaning when we really study it out. Because there is so much ungodliness in this world, so much things happening, and so many good people are getting caught up in them because they're not paying attention to what God looks at as righteous, and what he looks at is not righteous. Think about these words that we find in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Ungodly things to avoid. In Proverbs chapter 6, starting with verse 16, it says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deceiveth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discard among brethren. Look around today. How embarrassed were you this week when we saw what happened? The President of the United States is in Europe. The President of the United States representing the people here. And look at the Democrats and the vow that came out of their mouth. Ridiculous. This is a party that stands for abortion, the murdering, the taking of innocent blood, which we are warned about. They sell dead baby body parts. 
They are selling dead baby body parts for a profit. And the way they're going, they will soon be harvesting body parts off of live babies. And if you think I'm crazy, they are now wanting to let the child be born alive to decide if it should die or not. They will then harvest the body parts. Jesus tells us in Proverbs 6, 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. We today have commandments from God through Jesus. So many people think we no longer have commandments. But look in the gospel account. as written by St. John in chapter 14. In chapter 14 verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. So if he says, if I love him, i got to keep his commandments, how can you say there's no commandments? And in verse 23, Jesus also tells to all who will hear, all who will listen, if a, let, <clears throat> if a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abdul with him. Study the word. Studying the word of God will help bind this word onto your heart. We need to bind the word of God in our heart. We need to have the full word of God in us. We need to understand what is right and wrong. We need to understand the laws of God. The commandments are laws of God. If you took that, what a law is and a command is, it is the law of God, what we should be doing in this side of the cross. We have the commands of Jesus that were given to us by God through Jesus. And we have them in writing so we can understand and obey them. We need to make sure that we tie them around our neck. We need to make sure that they are on our heart. That when we go to sleep, they protect us. While we're awake, they protect us. When we wake up in the morning, why do we thank God for singing in the morning and pray? And thank Him because we have yet another day to get it right. Think about these things. And let's go to Isaiah 59. Again, Isaiah 59. Think about what these words here are saying. He says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. None calls for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockeye eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their web shall not <clears throat> become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the acts of violence is in their hands. Their feet run evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their path. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their going. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for life, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope the walls like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In trespassing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. 
And judgment is turned away backwards, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and iniquity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessions. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompose to his enemies, to the island he will repay, recompose. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression into Jericho, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forevermore. Think about what he's saying. Hands defiled with blood. This week, everyone running for president on the Democratic Party, they are wanting abortion to be on demand, paid for by everybody. Why? It's worth millions of dollars to them. They kill innocent blood for money. Your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Have you heard the truth come out of any of our leaders in a long time? They lie. They speak injustice. They do nothing but division, discard, and their tongues mutter perverseness. They are upset because someone wants to have a straight pride day, meaning heterosexuals, and just put them on display as how we should be living a normal life. They think that's terrible, but yet when they have the quote-unquote gay pride day with all the perversion and now they got all these transsexuals and stuff going to these kindergarten schools and these grade schools and all these people that men that dress up like women like it's something normal. What is wrong, folks? What is wrong? See, we need to, as the Lord's Church, call for justice. We need to plead with the truth. We cannot trust in vanity. We cannot let the lies keep speaking. We need to step up to the plate and tell people this is wrong. The sad part is, and this is something we really need to get across to this country, that the Democratic Party, if you get out of the womb alive, they're going to turn you into a homosexual, which kills you in the sight of God anyway. That's the whole problem. You see, their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their past. The way of peace they know not. We know this for sure. There's no judgment in their going. They made their crooked path. Whosoever go to this shall not know peace. You know, we spent all this time, supposedly we're going to see that our president was so bad, and after $40 million, 14 liberal lawyers could not find anything on him. We were told for two years, we have to accept that report. The report comes out. American accepts it, but the Democrats don't because it doesn't show what they want. They lie, they're mischievous, and we need to understand we have to stand up. If the Lord's church does not stand up, who's going to do it? We had the Methodist church, many of the Holy Roller churches. They're all accepting gays like everything's good. No. You, we have to preach to them and get them to understand that if they are in that sin when they die, they will be in hell's fire. They got to understand that no matter what man says, no matter what man says about it, God says it is wrong. And there's nowhere in the Bible that says it's right. Let's go to 2 Peter in chapter 3. 
And again, there's so many things in the Bible that's so hard to decide what we should talk about and what we should look at in a night. But it is so many things that tells us what is right and wrong in this Bible. And all we're doing right now is highlighting some of the major ones. But when we look at 2 Peter chapter 3, again, it's kind of like the book we're studying out of Jude. It tells us a lot and a lot of things we need to pay attention to and to what's really going on in this world. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, a servant of Jesus Christ, one who's with him from the beginning, one who betrayed him but came back, one who was a great apostle, a great preacher, tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by ways of remembrance. He is writing that to us today. Read it as if he's writing it to you today, because he did. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and by the combination of the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of this coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continued as they were, from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heaven and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, the works that therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening until the coming of the day of, the, of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall dissolve, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. As also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Yea, therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things, before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. We are warned to stay on the godliness side and not on the ungodliness side. So many people, because they will not study the Word of God, and they find something that they don't like, they don't study it out to find out if it's true or not, and they fall away. Then we have man that wants to change the Word of God because he doesn't like what it says. We cannot add to, we cannot take away from the Word of God. This is the contract. It's very simple. We spoke of this before. It's a testament. It's a will. And you can be heirs of the throne of God. You can be heirs to the kingdom of heaven. But you have to do it on the contract basis that we have.
When we go underneath that water, come up out of that watery grave, a new creature in Christ, we now have a contract that was signed in the blood of Jesus. We have a contract with Jesus who says, I will share my inheritance with you. But we have to do it his way, which is not his way, but the Father's way in heaven. Jesus loved us so much that he came to this earth to make sure that he personally shows us how to get to heaven. He left the splendors of heaven to show this to us. And these are things that we need to stop and think about. Little things in life we need to stop and think about. We need to convince the people in this country that there is a right and wrong. That there needs to be stability. There needs to be respect. Jesus is not going to be mocked. God is not mocked. And these people that think it's really funny that they do all these things against the Christian, against Jesus, and against God, they will pay one heck of a price. But the thing is, folks, we need to stop and teach the children what is right and what is wrong. We have lost so many children to such perversion because they do not know what is right and wrong. All they hear is the wrong. All they hear is the evil. They don't get to see the good side. You know, we should be all happy. We know we're on our way to heaven. And I think that's why most people who really truly feel that there is a Jesus and they try to follow Jesus are a happier people, group of people, than those who really don't understand anything about life. You know, it's not a matter of what we have in this fleshly world. It's what we put in the spiritual world. And this is something that we need to really, truly, truly try to get across to the world. That is the job of the Lord's church. We find this in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He says, Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. You see, what is upright? The word of God. What are words of truth? The word of God. A good preacher is going to seek these out and put them in order. The words of the wise are as cores and as nails fastened by the master of assemblers, which are given from one shepherd. One shepherd. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one shepherd. He is the shepherd of our souls. You know, something that was said today on the radio, it's very interesting, and I never thought of it this way. Sheep are led, cattle are driven. All animals are driven, but sheep are led. So are we allowing Jesus to lead us to heaven? Something to think about. And it says, And further by these, my son, be admonished, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You see, so many people, they go out and they find these self-help books, and they find this book on the Bible, and they find uh, these professors that tell you what it says. Hey, you know what? Right here. Yes, sometimes there are things, I agree, it's hard to understand. But if you study it out and you keep studying and digging and understand and use a Bible dictionary, you can figure it out. The Lord will help you understand if you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. But those who try to understand without the gift of the Holy Ghost, they will be baffled. You see... Jesus made this so that we can find the truth, but we have to seek in order to find the truth. We have to study to show ourselves approved. Amen? Amen? So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work unto judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be e evil. The Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. We are told. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the question is, are you knowledgeable enough in the Lord Jesus to be a blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly? 
You see, we have to stay knowledgeable in what Jesus tells us in order to not walk in that counsel of the ungodly. Because in this world, we are being set with trap after trap after trap and trap. And we need to make sure that we are not part of those who fall into those traps. We're either going to be knowledgeable enough in the Lord Jesus to become a blessed man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or we're going to become a fool that despises wisdom and instruction. For remember, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Fools do not like to listen to the word of God. They always shun it. They don't want to hear it. Another time, they will say. But tonight, we know that Jesus is coming back. And tonight, if you're outside of Christ for any reason, why are you there? You stop and think about this for a moment. If you don't have the blood of Jesus, what's holding you back? Because someone says, oh, you don't have to do that. Really? Jesus made it very clear why he was here on this earth. In the gospel account of John, in John chapter 3, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Ye must be born of the water and of the Spirit. And there's only one way, the Bible shows, how one is born of the water and of the Spirit, and that is to be baptized, that is to be immersed, that is to go underneath that water and come up a new creature in Christ. That is to be buried with Jesus in the water, to be covered with the blood. And if you have the blood of Christ... And you've fallen away. Don't be like Judas. You know, Judas had in his head. He couldn't repent. He couldn't do anything. He just wound up killing himself. And now he's paying one heck of a price. But Peter and them, they realized they could come back to Jesus. And that's what we need to understand. As long as we're covered in the blood and we repent and we truly turn away from that sin, we can come back to Jesus. It says, sinneth not. Sinneth not doesn't say you're not going to sin. That's why we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. But we come to Jesus for forgiveness. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. In the arms of... Christ my Savior.